Welcome to In The Workshop. Having a quick look at the Stuart Models No. 9 bought online. I sound like a bingo caller. And this No. 9 steam engine was bought by one of my customers in a moment of madness from the internet auction site that we all know and love. On the surface, it looks quite nice. Well, from this angle anyway, my first impressions are that the engine is very well machined. The finish on the castings and the paintwork is very good indeed. What I'm doing at the moment is refitting the inlet manifold because this had been removed so it wouldn't get damaged in transit. Surprisingly, a Stuart No. 9 is an engine I've never had. I've seen plenty of them and I've worked on quite a few, but I've never owned one. And they're quite chunky looking. It's a bit like a larger version of a 10H with the crosshead assembly from a No. 1. So what's this example like? Well, I don't know really. It's difficult to tell at this stage. It's looking a little bit suspicious to me. It would appear that there is quite a lot of play in certain areas where there shouldn't be any play at all. So to start with, look at the play in the crankshaft. This is quite excessive. And with this amount of play in the crankshaft bearings, it's one of two things. The main bearings have either been machined oversize, or the top caps are just very, very slack or a combination of both, for different reasons. What I'm doing at the moment is moving the position of the flywheel on the crankshaft because currently it's scraping against the side of the engine when the engine rotates. I just levered out the crankshaft key, then I move the flywheel further away from the side of the engine and tap the key back into position. In this clip, I'm adjusting the tightness of the top part of the bearings. This engine doesn't use a separate top cap, the top cap is the top bearing, and at the moment, both of these top bearings are quite loose. I wonder why. I think it's time for some oil. I'll use my special homebrew oil mixture. The special oil mixture that I use most of the time on model steam engines consists of 50% 1000 grade steam oil, 25% rapeseed oil or canola oil, and 25% machine oil or 3-in-1 oil. The mix ratio is approximate and is by volume, not by weight. I'm making sure that I get oil into every nook and cranny of this engine, and while doing this, I can't help but notice some other problems. The crosshead, for instance, is very, very much a rattle fit in the crosshead guide, but only at one end of the stroke. This could be a little bit ominous. If the main casting has been bored so the cylinder fits on the end of it at an angle, that would explain it. On the other hand, it could just be that the centre line of the crankshaft doesn't correspond with the centre line of the piston rod. If everything was in line and the crosshead was a rattle fit, it's quite an easy job to shim it. But you can't shim it if it's going to lock solid at the tight end. Seeing as how the engine is now fully oiled and ready to go, I'm going to turn the compressed air on and see if it runs. Well, it was pointless speaking through that section. Is it me, or does the crankshaft look like a banana? Anyway, that's just one of the problems, along with the main bearing problem and the fact that there's play in the small end, the crosshead is a rattle fit in the crosshead guide, there's play in the big end brasses. This engine has its fair share of problems. The serious one, for me, is the fact that if the bed casting was machined incorrectly, and the cylinder is out of line with the crosshead, then fixing that problem alone could take quite a while. Well, the good news is I've speeded up the engine and nothing's fallen off. But now it's time to look at the flywheel. It's got great big chunks out of it and holes in it. These are called blow holes, and they're down to the casting process. And the normal procedure when you get blow holes in a casting that you're machining is to contact the company from whom you bought the castings and ask them for a replacement. This is a Stuart Models casting and Stuart Models have a no quibble guarantee. 
so you just contact them and they send you a new casting. That's all I can say about the flywheel, it's the other problems that worry me more than the flywheel, a new flywheel can be machined easily enough. This problem with the crosshead I'm really not happy about, lots of play at this end, but when you move it back towards the cylinder it tightens up substantially, and just look at the play in the small end, it's ridiculous. This I think is a good example of the main hazard of buying via internet auction sites when you're basically bidding on a photograph. And photographs can look great. So where do we go from here? The whole point of this is for me to give my customer an assessment as well as an estimate for repairing the engine. So when I look at how many hours it would take me to repair this engine, plus the additional costs of having to buy a new flywheel because I wouldn't expect Stuart Models to supply me a new casting free of charge for this engine, then I would have to machine the flywheel, make a new crankshaft, sort out the main bearings, sort out this problem where the crosshead's not in line, make new big end brasses, a new pin for the crosshead, and that's before I look at what's going on inside the cylinder. Who knows what it's like in there? So the final summary is that this engine is beyond economical repair from my point of view. You have to take into consideration the initial cost of the engine off the auction site, and add to that the cost of a new flywheel and my fees. So much as I'd like to help out and repair this engine, I really can't because it's impractical. Be very careful what you buy online. Buying from internet auction sites is not always a bad experience. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.